Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing with another product review video. Um, what this happened is a customer had sent in actually three sets of heads or three heads for me to flow and to do an evaluation of video on. You two can have this done and only cost 30 bucks. You send in your head, it costs 30 bucks plus return shipping and I'll do it. Yes, I know that's cheap, but it doesn't take very long for me to do. Uh, and I do it kind of in the free time, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but anyway, today's head is the Edelbrock. E210 head. Now, actually, a lot of people have asked about this head. Um, I will tell you a little background about this head as far as my experience with this. I've done one other set of head, one other head I have ported for these E10s. And let me explain. A long time ago, had to be at least 10 years ago, when they first come out, I was like, ooh, this could be the hot ticket because it's an American made head. It was 210 cc's and the advertised phone numbers look pretty good. And so a customer I talked in, hey, let's give it a shot. I'll go ahead and port them. Let's see how good we can make them. Well, when I got them, I ordered them bare. So this is a lesson for you guys if you choose to order this head bare. If you order it bare, the guides, that's this part right here, are not sized. In other words, they're small. And the valve job has not been cut at all. So you have a nice square seat. And because of that, I was never able to get the stock phone numbers because after all, I had to size the guide, then do my own valve job, which might be different from what Elderbrock did, which obviously it is different from Elderbrock's. So the numbers added for that when I flowed them, um, it kind of doesn't, was it wouldn't match a stock one because that's not the same valve job. So you get the idea. So I ended up porting it and I think it did like 310 CF, CFM, nothing to be outstanding about, but it wasn't bad. There were some things I didn't like about it. So I have seen this head before, but not in its stock configuration as it is here. So let's go ahead and talk about the head though. This has a 64cc chamber. It has 208 intake valves and a 1600 exhaust valve. 210 uh, cc's on the intake side as well. The chamber doesn't look really that bad, this is an honest opinion. Um, you got a spark plug and it's kind of heart shaped, although it's pretty flat coming off here. I would have probably moved this in, but whatever. Also, I would have built up this ridge, ridge here, so it's kind of like a divergent cone of air coming out. But some people are like, you need to get rid of that. Mm, it actually hurts flow, but we'll see. Um, if you look at it, it looks like they have hand blended the valve job. So they got done doing the valve job. And you can see this is cartridge roll activity. It's not CNC'd. So they hand did this. That's why you can see it over here as well. So it looks like they blend in the bowls by hand. Just a little cartridge roll thing, doesn't take long. And you can see it on the exhaust side too. Um, these have a 45 degree seat, which is real common. Um, the seat material itself, I actually like their seats and they usually do pretty good. And one of the complaints people have said is the guides are tight. And I have to say every, almost, I should say, almost every Elder Brock head I've ever gotten, the guides are too tight and I have to size them to make them bigger from being a symbol like this. It's too tight and it makes me scared. So I open them up a little bit. Uh, this one I did check and it turns out it was actually fine. So maybe they've adjusted since then. I did spot this though and I don't know if the camera's going to capture it. That's not going to. Let me move the light over. Maybe it will. Uh, nope. Camera's not going to spot it. Oh, I just had, there it is. See those? Those ridges? There you go. Can you see them? That's chatter. Um, what happens is when you cut the valve job, if things aren't right, and sometimes they'll do it even if they are right, you'll get chatter, and that's this, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it looks like a record player on its seats. And it causes them actually not to seal up very well too. So you actually have to, the way to fix it is to slow down the speed and go slower and cuts through it. Um, there's a bunch of different ways too. Or you may not have a seat and guide machine to do it. You can use stones. Um, go through it. You might try lapping it, but God, I bet you'd have to lap forever just to get that out. So anyway, to me, that won't pass. Um, you could try it, but it's going to, even if you ran the valve on it, eventually it's going to kind of wear. It's, it's not a good thing and it probably won't seal. That's a bad sign. Um, so, and I don't know why, I, why they, why this happens. Sometimes if you just rush, if you go really fast when you're cutting the seats, they'll do that too. However, usually whenever I'm doing valve jobs, the Elder Brock heads are ones that are pretty easy to cut. Their seat material cuts nice. I have no really issues, at least on my machine. And mine's not even near the top grade machine for having um, issues with chatter on this head. There are other heads where I would say, man, it's a fight and the fight is on. So I don't like that. I'm just saying that right off. The port design itself doesn't look all that bad. 
it doesn't really, it has, it looks like, yeah, a slight vein and it's not pointing entirely this way towards the center, but as you can tell, kind of off. So it's centered here, but not moving towards the center of the chamber. That's a bit different, nothing bad. I will say something else that's probably gonna affect its flow numbers is this. These are the valves that came with it. So they got pretty good valves, it looks like. They're stainless steel. This is the intake valve, obviously. But you see something that's missing, and you may not know, unless you watch my channel, it has no back cut. What's a back cut? This one actually has two back cuts, but there's your seat, back cut, back cut. You don't need two, this one just happens to have it. Let's just grab one of them, it has one, so don't confuse you further. This one. That being the seat, and this is the back cut. The back cut helps low lift flows. So what I mean by that is, um, three, four, and five back cut helps. It hurts a little bit um, having, a, having a back cut at the higher lifts, like six, seven, but usually we put back cuts on everything because it makes more power with the exception of the exhaust. I never put a back cut on the exhaust. I point this out because the customer actually sent in this information with the head. And this is what Elderbrock claims it flows. So if you look, 68 on the intake, 50 on exhaust at 100, 136, 196, 200. At 300, um, sorry, 191, 132. So far, I believe all those so far until right here. At 400, 265, 160. I believe the exhaust, I don't believe the intake. That you have to have, at least on my bench, a really good head to hit 260s at 400. Um, good heads usually are in the 250s. Really good ones are in 260s, like extremely good. This is an extremely good. This one I actually believe and this one I believe. Same with the exhaust, I believe those two. I actually think it's gonna do that. I just don't believe that one number. The rest are really, really probably gonna nail it. So, but we'll find out. Here's what else the customer sent. This is what he had for this. Yeah, it looks like he had the list price currently at $15.29, which for an American made head, it's actually pretty reasonable right now because a lot of them are far more expensive, it seems like. So let me change, this is a hydraulic roller view. So let me change it so you can see some different views. And then I'll go ahead and flow it and share the numbers with you. Here's the intake view. And it looks like it's a 1206 entry. And it looks like the CNC machine did some of the port magic, but not much. And then it looks like they tried blending. That's what this cartridge roll stuff is by hand on that. So there's that. If I look at the hardware, love the seals. These are the seals I'm talking about. These are fine, good to work with. It does look like they didn't install them all the way because there's a gap between the lip there. So not really, they should be further down. Um, they do have ID locators, which I like. They sit underneath the spring and prevent it from moving here. What I don't like, yep, hate that. That's probably why it's cheaper. These are seven degree locks. I'm not a fan of seven degree locks. You run an engine for a while that has a seven degree lock and you pop it off and say you change the valve spring. What happens is right here on this tip, it will mushroom it out and it hard and they're almost, they, because they flare out, they're hard to push back through the guide and end up scratching the guide going down. And it only happens, I've ever seen it on seven degree stuff. I'm not a fan of seven degree. Although being a hydraulic roller, it's probably not the end of the world, not like it's gonna drop a valve or nothing, but I just don't prefer it. Um, rock arm studs, these are three eighths and guide plates look normal. So everything beside that, it looks pretty good. The valve, I have no idea where it's made. Um, I have no idea. I just wish I had an intake had a back cut, let her net. Looks like a fine valve, should do well. And that's this view. Let me show you the exhaust view, then we'll get the flowing. Oh, 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 hold on a second, I wanna show you this. This is the port. I did take measurements of it, so let me show you. Um, the throat measured 88.9%, which is about right. The bowl, which is in there, right? I guess if you went in here, right across from where the guide is, um, it's 95.6. Now the short side area is 3.26. And I said before in the previous video that usually if you multiply this, if you just take out the decimal, that's about what it'll flow, which would indicate this would flow 326, but I doubt it. There's a lot of other stuff that's working against it. In other words, it has the area to flow it, but I doubt it happens. The push rod pin's 2.33. Let's go back to that though. If we look in here, it looks like the bowl's not extremely wide, but the short side is. So in other words, this is right here is the short side. See where it's like a smiley face? This is really wide. So I know they probably left it straight going this way and brought it really far this way and kept it that way and then make it bigger into the bowl. Um, so it's got quite a bit of area there and it's also got some height, but definitely some height because the short side is pretty short. So this is wider than usual on the heads this size, but the height here is definitely bigger too. So 
it's got the area there to flow more air, but I don't know that because the bowl is small that it's going to happen. Also, the pushrod pinch is pretty small. And then, um, let's go back to flip it around so I can show you real quick. If I look at the valve job transition looks so good. A little notch there, not really a fan, but there's not a lot of bowl depth, which I wish there was more. So there's some things that just, I don't think it's gonna, I think it's gonna get pretty close to what it claims, but I don't think it hit 326. Usually you can. So it's got the right area there, just not these two areas aren't. All right, let's look at the exhaust side. This is the exhaust side. They're a D port design. Looks nice. I have to say they're, looks like they're raised up a little bit. Really looks nice. And they only claim it flows 175 CFM, and it may be that way because if I reach my finger in here and you can't see it, but right there where the short side is, and I know you can't see it, it's kind of, it's almost like a 90 degree. It's not quite, it's probably like a 110, 110 degree turn to get in there. So it's not the greatest. I'm sure if you did some work on it, you probably could get it up a bit more. I actually bet it goes up better than 175 CFM though on exhaust. You can tell they can see it. The seal's not down all the way. Look how it's crooked. See it? Yeah, that should have been down further. Anyway, um, let's get the flowing. Okay, just got done flowing it. Just to explain. I floated on a 430 bore, which is the same you'd have on your 383s. And I could have flown on a 4155 bore, but I just don't want to do it. It takes more time. I do think this head's probably a better size for a 383, although it worked great on a 400 too, especially on the street deal. I did not flow into the exhaust pipe, and I know Elder Brock doesn't either. Let's see how the numbers compare to what they have. Here are the numbers. So the ones I'm most concerned about are four, six, and peak. If you look at 400, it had 229. At uh, 600, 261, and a peak 265, really. So, in general, I actually think those numbers aren't bad. For the size of the head and as cast head, it's not bad at all. The exhaust is pretty good. I mean, not great, but it's good. Uh, 163 at four and 203 at peak. Now, uh, let's see how they compare to what they claim, just so you can see. So, if you look at Elderbrock claims, we'll ignore that one, we'll go to two. At 200, it says 136 and 96. I've got 130, so it's Elderbrock six higher. And let's see which one. Uh, 96, and this is at 200, and I've got 94. So that's close on the exhaust. Let's go to 300. They say 191, 132. I'm 185, so they're higher still. And we're about the same on the exhaust, so that's good. Now for the next one, 400. I told you this number, this intake number is probably off, and it's off big time. If you look at the exhaust, it says 160. Let's see. Intake's supposed to be 265. It's 229, way off. Exhaust though, 163, and they claimed 160. Told you that exhaust is probably gonna do better than what it said. Peak, and then it says 272, 275. As you know, it didn't get there. However, the exhaust, it said it was only gonna do 172, 175. It did way better. So it's, it's for sure significantly worse at 400 than what they claim. The rest of the numbers are about 10 CFM off at peak, but the other numbers aren't really that far, except for, of course, 400. The exhaust is actually better. Um, so that's good. Um, I do think it's a great head. Flows pretty close to what it claims. Elderbrock numbers, for the record, they're usually low, lower than what most others advertise, and closer to what they actually are on a bench. So if you generally, when you see Elderbrock's numbers, they're pretty right. Um, they usually don't fluff them up. Now, granted, that one's probably up a little bit. I don't think they were trying to lie. It could have been just someone typed in the computer wrong. So for all I know, that number should have been there. And this one should have been shifted down. So maybe this was supposed to be five, six, seven, which would have made way better sense. Who knows? It could have been just typographical error because that really would have made sense. But, well, I was still 255 and five, but you get the idea. Anyway, good flowing head. Be a great for a 383 or a 400. And uh, anyway, there you go. Hopefully you got something out of it. Remember, I'm no Superman and you guys take care.